Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Heart to Heart with Hads. I hope you guys have had a fantastic week so far. It's Friday, if you're listening, when this drops on a Friday. Yay! Anyways, I'm recording on a Thursday, and I know I've said in my last couple of episodes that I was going to go back to recording them at the beginning of the week. But I always hold off until the day before, so I need to just like quit quit procrastinating. But honestly, I like to have like this full week like recap so that I can just kind of like give some insights and maybe some tips and things of like things that have been going on within the coaching realm, just like my everyday life, whatever it may be, because I want to make it a little bit more personable and just be able to like share some things that have been going on with Um, other people just like just giving some like quick tips or like some tidbits of coaching things so that I'm able to give it give to you in that sense but before we get into the episode of today's topic which it's going to be a hard to hear and I thought that I should maybe start making some of my episodes a little bit related to like my health and fitness besides just personal growth and development and stuff because you know, that is me, like, I am a health of pads, duh, um, but I just feel like I needed to incorporate that and give a lot more useful tips on that, because a lot of people don't really know the basic things and skills and knowledge when it comes to that, so I think I'm gonna start doing that, so today's topic is actually have it written out, so I need to just say exactly what it is, um, picky eating is a grown-up excuse like I am so sick of the excuse that I'm picky the amount of time that I hear every single week I just want to like rip my hair out like they're like yeah I just like really don't like healthy foods I'm like what do you mean grow up grow the hell up anyways we'll get into that in a little bit but for now I just wanted to do like a little recap of my last week. I don't know why my stress has been super exacerbated lately. I have no clue what's going on. I've actually started incorporating coffee back into my routine and I'm I'm very in tune with my body. So I know when little things are throwing me out of whack and I definitely feel like it's the coffee. Now I feel like I should do a better job of listening to my body whenever I don't know about you guys, but sometimes in the mornings, like, I wake up, and sometimes I feel good and refreshed, and then other days, I'm like, holy shit, I'm anxious, my to-do list is, you know, this freaking long, and I just feel like I need that extra cup of joe, or it's not even extra, it's just, like, I feel like I need that, and it actually makes things so much worse, and It's just a bad habit that I've gotten into these past couple weeks, so I'm kind of tattling on myself here, but I think some other things that we can do to help get us out of that, like, morning, really high stress, strong situation is to immediately go outside. I notice that I feel so much better when I go outside, and I've been doing this mini cut now, so I am doing fast cardio. So I feel like that's also stressing me out too. It's like I get up and I go straight into cardio and I don't allow my body to like just chill out for like five minutes. So tomorrow, this weekend, I'm going to try out doing my journaling at at the very beginning of the day before I step onto the cardio machine just so that it's not like wake up, stress, get on there, stress, get my heart rate up. You know, I'm actually having time to like calm down. Because I feel like once I do the cardio, I'm like, holy shit, I'm like stressed for the rest of the day. I don't know. So maybe that's just something I need to work to work on. But also too, like the caffeine shit is just not helping me feel any better. And I feel like I've been just a little bit neglecting my mental recently. And I don't know what's going on. Like, Like I said, I think it's the coffee mixed with just like having such high expectations for myself which is fine and it's not just the high expectations it's like the high expectations plus you know like eliminating all my distractions so I think I mentioned in the last episode that I turned off 
all notifications on my phone besides my coaching apps. And I can't tell you how much more productive I've been. Yes, I'm not getting like Instagram, getting, getting to Instagram DMs as fast, but I can't, I can honestly say that my productivity has skyrocketed. I've had less screen time. I've been able to focus more. So I highly encourage you to do that. You're going to feel 10 times better and just so much more productive and like you're checking off boxes. And I, this week's just been a little bit overwhelming too. Like I've taken on a couple other responsibilities. So I, um, I don't handle stress well if you don't know. And I have to legitimately like time block out my days so that I can manage my time better and not get overly overwhelmed. But this weekend, I'm literally just going to chill the freak out. Like tomorrow night, I'm getting my nails done and then I'm going to take a bath. Saturday, I'm having a chill day. Same with Sunday, just like completely relax. I want to finish this book that I've started and just give myself like the self-care that I need so I encourage you to do that as well I just go through like spurts of like yes I gotta like gotta do this 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 and it's like holy shit like I need a I need to chillax a little bit so yeah I definitely have um stressed myself out just a tad bit but also too it's a new month and it's also the last quarter of the year the last three months of the year And so I'm also putting a lot of pressure on myself, which is a good thing. Pressure is a, is a huge privilege. We should all view pressure as like, be very grateful that you're, you have pressure. But, um, yeah, I've just set like a lot of goals for myself and that means doing new things, changing styles of things, like getting out of my comfort zone. I can just name a couple of things that I've done, like getting my freaking camera out and recording content at the gym. Like it's my job. Like why am I not doing it? And it's frustrating because I know it's going to help me not only, you know, grow as an individual, get out of my comfort zone, but it's going to draw in more people to me and to be able to help my business grow and me evolve. And so it's so uncomfy. I think everyone cares and is staring at me because I have this big old honking camera and I'm recording myself, but literally no one gives a shit. So I just, this is an insecurity of mine, which I don't know why I have because two years ago when I first got my camera, I was like, oh my gosh, I brought it everywhere. I didn't care. And now I just have this like imposter syndrome, which is super selfish because no one, literally no one cares. And I know all of us have some sort of imposter syndrome. I think it's just because like, I feel deep down that like, you know, I can be so much better. Like I, it's, it's really a mental battle, but like I can look so much better. Like I need to look a certain way because I'm this fitness coach and I'm trying to help all these people achieve their bodies. And it's like, they're looking at me and it's like, do I even represent a healthy body? It's just, it's kind of sometimes mentally exhausting, but at the end of the day, like I just got to be me, be my authentic self. Like people love me for me, not for what I look like. Obviously, like I personally think that a coach needs to portray what they're going to give out, like, you know, being fit. And so obviously that's something that I always want to be. And it's just a struggle of mine because, you know, the same things that my clients, my athletes deal with, I deal with them too. And I sit here and I coach them on, you know, do this and like, you know, we need to talk to ourselves nicer, but like sometimes I just need to sit there and take my own freaking advice. And it's so hard to do that. So just some things I've been stressed about recently. So I just need to get that off my chest. It makes me feel a lot better just sitting in front of the mic talking about it. But Let's, should we, shall we dive into today's episode? Yes, we should. So, like I said, we're going to jump into picky eating and how it's just like a shitty ass excuse and I'm just so tired of it. And it's like, oh, like I don't know how to be healthy. I don't know. It's like because you've never, you've never tried the foods. Like, it's one thing to say like I've tried it. And I hate it. 
It's another thing to be like, oh, I don't like it. And you've never actually fucking tried the food. That's just, that's BS to me. But just, just, can you just think through this with me for a second? Okay. Those who have more diversity in their diet are likely so much healthier than those who are like, oh, I don't like healthy food. I, I don't like chicken and I don't like beef and I, I don't like this vegetable, this vegetable, and this vegetable, but yet you're still 40 pounds, 50 pounds overweight. Like, make it freaking make sense. You would feel so much better. You would actually likely lose body fat would you have more vegetables and have more fruit in your freaking diet and eat more protein. And you're like, oh, I just don't like protein. I don't like meat. I'm just like, stop. Like, you're literally holding yourself back. Take yourself out of your freaking comfort zone, stay out of the middle sections of the freaking grocery store, get on the perimeter, try new foods, and I guarantee you, you're going to feel better. It literally drives me so freaking nuts. I can tell you too, like, as a kid, I used to be picky. My mom would make shit all the time that would have, like, lots of protein in it, and I was just one of those people that was just like, oh my god, I just love, 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 love carbs. And it's like, there has to be a point in time where you grow up. And you try certain foods. And it don't I don't care if you're already 50 years old. You got to try You got to try the foods, okay? And you have to incorporate them into your diet. Unless you want to keep feeling like shit and being overweight for the rest of your life. Being diabetic, whatever it may be, pre-diabetic. I'm sorry, I just had to go on that little rant there. Because it just, it's, it just pisses me off, okay? Um, but yeah, like we got to break free of that mindset because... It's holding you back from living a healthy life, Sarah, okay? So, picky eating, too, is, like, something that I associate with, like, kids. Like, you're going to tell me you're an adult and, like, you don't, you're picky? Like, that's, that, I'm sorry, but that's embarrassing. Like, you're just, you're avoiding the foods and the things that you know you need to do to be healthy and... You just need to, that's just like a lack of like self-awareness. Like be aware of the shit you need to do to feel better. And I'm not going to say like the food that I eat, people are like, oh, the shit you eat just like does not look good. It is not appetizing. And I'm like, okay, first of all, I may have taste buds, like I may have acquired some weird taste buds. But like I said, I was the pickiest eater as a kid. I was a twig, okay? I would eat bread, noodles pasta like I did not like the shit that was actually good for me until I started to realize that holy crap I felt like shit I feel like I could take a nap in the middle of the day because all I'm eating is carbs 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 okay and then I got in my comfort cell I was like oh you know what whenever I did go down this like healthy path I was like you know what looking into the foods the things I needed to eat to actually you know lose body fat feel better like started paying attention to my macros essentially and that's when I started discovering foods. I look in the produce section. I try new things. If you don't like it, then don't eat it. But you have to be willing to try these new things. And so it just comes down to like, ugh, stop being so stuck in your fucking ways. I'm so sick of it. Okay, this I'm just like triggering people. I know I am. But like you have to be able to get out, just jump out of your box. Like you cannot expect to be stuck where you are. Um what's next let me see okay so another thing too is like you're putting your health and your gut at so much risk just sticking to the same foods over and over and over again like I said at the beginning if you're not having any diversity in your diet um you're having the same processed foods that's when you develop these problems the the bloating the acid reflux the weakened immune systems and these are not just minor things these are the things that contribute to disease later on down the road and what you do right now, 100% affects everything down the road. Stop looking now and look ahead. Do you want to be 70 years old and you're still eating fucking pizza out of a Tostitos pizza? Like, whatever it may be, you're, you're, feeding, your, you're feeding your future self, okay? Not only that, like, what you're eating now, you're sending messages to your future kids saying like yeah this is okay to eat like this all the time which is like mm, not good because they're gonna grow up and they're gonna go down the same path you're on and they're gonna say 
oh, I'm picky. So you, as a parent, need to diversify their diet as a parent because it's going to help them. They're going to be healthier. They're going to have a better immune system. So once you start feeding them a wide variety of nutrient-dense foods, you're going to see their life change, their behavior change. And it's, it's very much rewarding whenever you're fueling yourself correctly and them. So let's see here. What else do I have? Um, change your mindset. So you weren't, like I said, you're not going to be born with being like, oh, like this is how I am. I just don't like it. You have to actually make the change. You have to like try new things. So starting small, introduce new whole foods one at a time. Like I said, scan the perimeter of the store, cook differently, use different seasonings, like actually salt your food. This is huge. My family, a couple of my family, they don't season their shit. And I'm like, you wonder why you don't like food because you don't know how to season or cook it correctly. So, so frustrating. Okay. Another thing too is your environment. Change the environment. First of all, I've said this so many times. Change the people you're around. Stop buying this shit is the problem. Like, you have all this stuff in your pantry. Like, oh, I have cosmic brownies to choose from. I have oatmeal cream pies. And it's like, yeah, stop buying the shit. Like, try new foods. Get out of your freaking box. And then set a goal to eat more colorful foods at every meal. Like, Add in, sprinkle in something that is colorful, that is not just brown coming out of a box. That sounded so gross, but what am I trying to think? Like crackers or something, or like chips. Like, I don't mean chips. I don't mean Doritos. Like, you're like, oh, but that's colorful. It's orange. I have this, and then I have my blue gushers and whatever else that's colorful. And I have my... I don't even know what else I'm trying to say here. I don't have my ego waffles. Like, I'm doing good. No. Like I said, stay on the perimeter. And even then, sometimes the bread's on the perimeter. That don't count, okay? But I think I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to do, like, a little hard-to-hear episode and how to just stop being a little bitch when it comes to your eating. It's so aggravating. Change your ways. Stop being so stuck in your ways um picky eating is not a quirk like oh i'm so picky i'm a picky eater it's a choice and it's directly impacting your health so it's time to ditch ditch those freaking excuses like i'm so sick of hearing it it's it's ridiculous so start taking control of your diet like a grown-up that you are because i'm sure majority of you listening are grown-ups okay snap out of it here okay so next time you're about to like skip the vegetables skip the fruit and grab the process act think back to this episode that i'm here right now you're acting like a little kid okay whenever you're eating the shit come on grow up it's time to grow up here okay break the cycle for yourself for your kids your grandkids whatever it may be okay we're ending it there anyways uh, yeah, this was just going to be like a short little hard to episode. I told you it wasn't going to be super long, but I just kind of wanted to piss you off, get you triggered. Maybe if it, um, does trigger you, then good, good. You need to make a change. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Be sure to like, leave a review, subscribe, whatever it may be, and share with somebody that's a picky eater and up in their ass. So see you guys. Bye.